those chainsaw parts to repair them. So this is one of those saws that I did and intended to uh, do a paint durability test on and I honestly don't know why the hell it ended up in the side of my garage just sitting around doing nothing. But it has serves a purpose today as it has in the past. I went through a couple Walbro HDA carburetors for a fella who has some Hilti uh, saws, uh, or cutoff saw, concrete saw, and he sent me the three carbs. I went through each one, was comfortable, each one was good. He sent two back saying that only one would run, and I don't really have anything appropriate to test them on. But I'm hoping that I can at least bolt it up well enough on this 360 to see if I can make the thing run. Throttle linkage, choke linkage, all that crap's not going to hook up. I don't care. I need a saw that has a vacuum port for actuating the carburetor. And I need need it to seal up and an HDC and an HDA while different I'm hoping aren't so different that I can make this little experiment work I hadn't run this thing in quite some time as you can see carb base is almost exactly the same other than, yeah, the return spring's on a different side, and of course the throttle hookup's on a different side. But if I can get this linkage the hell out of the way, there's my vacuum pulse, that ought to work. There's my fuel hookup, that ought to work. I'm trying to rev it. Maybe I can do that down here. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We're going to try and get this thing run. I've got an idle speed screw, an external one here, that'll, that'll help me out, I guess. I don't know, maybe this is a dumb idea, but I've got to see what it's doing. I say, I don't, don't know what else to do in the carb. Everything looks fine. This is going to be a tight angle here. Alright, that's not going to work. Not at all. So I'm going to need, a, need an extension hose and hope I can marry all that up. This may be ridiculous. Actually, let me rephrase that. I know this is ridiculous. But you got to get creative when it comes to testing sometimes. Getting creative with pieces of hose, they're going to be even less compliant than they normally are. And that's already stretched to that size. Hey, if I trim, I'll take a risk and I'll trim a little bit off of this. Just to grease the skids, so to speak. I think I left enough extra to hook that other car back up. If not, I guess I just created more work for myself. Sleeving hoses like this isn't the, the awesomest thing ever, but in this situation, I don't know I have a big choice. Now, I think, I don't remember, I looked up those Hilti specs at one point, I thought. That engine ought to be bigger than this, so there should be more than enough fuel flow. Maybe too much. Okay, I can, pooey, fuel vapor, I can blow into the engine. So that means I didn't collapse that line. So that's good. 
even though this is ugly as sin, that ought to at least work. I need a little more hose here. Work for starting this thing. Come on, baby. Damn it. Too tight. I'm going to have to stretch that back in. Should be alright. Here goes nothing. Let's see what the hell happens. I'm going to look for fuel to draw first. Just drew fuel. One pull. So, get this idle speed up. About as high as I can get it. And that's interesting. Why is she not running yet? Say it drew fuel. That's flooded. I think. I saw that puff. Damn, wish I knew what this thing was doing. Well, there's one way to find out. I never heard it try to pop. But if it's flooded, we'll make it good and flooded. Oh yeah, she's... Do you think maybe I ought to turn on the switch? How brilliant was that? Extremely interesting. That leaned out. I'm wondering if the high speed check valve is bad. Okay, well, I'm going to dig into this carb again. I don't know what's, what's going on in there, but when I have something to report, we'll come back. Okay, I don't know what the hell to report here, because I haven't really found anything that just says, yeah, you found it. The inlet side is clean and clear. It's fine. This side, I didn't see anything wrong, but I went ahead and drove... A high-speed nozzle check valve out. You can always tell that by looking down on the carb throat, that piece sticking through. That'll drive into the carb chamber, and you can pull it out, take a peek at it. So I did my pressure test on it. It should not flow backwards, or at least a very slow leak down, which is what it did. And by slow, I mean the needle's going to do this, okay? You know, it's not going to hold pressure for any two minutes. Hell, if it holds pressure for ten seconds, you've got the best check valve on the planet. All it really is doing is forcing a piece of diaphragm material up against the seat to block the major engine impulse. Any sort of back feed through here from disrupting the flow of fuel through this carburetor circuit. That's all it's doing. And it just immediately, when you push from the other direction, goes right through. Now this one, you'll note, has a hole drilled in the top. Not all of them do. That's going to serve as a governor function. Uh, so that no matter how tight whoop, you turn the high-speed screw here, it's still going to flow some fuel, in theory, to equip, you know, not allow you to burn the engine out, and limit the top speed. So that you, since this is a cutoff saw, a lot of those wheels have a uh, RPM rating can't exceed them or you risk blowing them up so 
I'm gonna put this back together and we're gonna try running it again because I just don't know I don't see anything wrong now, I will say I this is the first HDA I can re recollect this batch is the first ones I've worked on these had limiter caps on them I've obviously taken those off because I needed to get those screws out so that I could again put forced air through them and just make sure there's nothing silly going on I will say that they're open both screws were open about two and a half turns which given the fine threads on these maybe that's appropriate maybe it's not I really don't know I don't have any idea but I'm gonna leave those limiter caps off at least for now we're gonna try running it on that uh, 360 again these have a swing of about a quarter turn so when I get it close I could put them back on but I'm honestly tempted to leave them off put them in the bag call it good you gotta have a real thin blade screwdriver to get down in here and you gotta push kinda hard so that it doesn't uh, doesn't start wallering out but I know for my personal preference limiter caps are not my friend especially when an engine starts to wear it's one thing when you're at the the brand new tolerances and you know an EPA emission setting is gonna make sense the saw has worn in a little bit those super lean settings don't necessarily work How this goes. turn Just simply readjusting that is all that me. I mean, it is obviously it died the first time. Here at leaning out, so that puts this at about three turns open, which is at least a half a turn beyond what the limiter caps would allow where it was set. So I've made my decision. I'm going to leave those off, Stuart. If you want to put them back on, once you've got your saw tuned, I'd put it in the middle of the adjustment. So that you had some direction on both sides uh, in the future but I guess I'll dink around with the other one do the same thing pop those caps off 
make sure it'll do this and uh, I'll get these heading back to you.